newly appointed National Director of Public Prosecutions, Nolisi Ngasasana, is already hard at work. The NPA is appealing against Judge John Murphy's judgment in the case against former crime intelligence boss Richard Ndluli. Judge Murphy set aside the withdrawal of fraud, corruption, murder and kidnapping charges against him. The NPA is now expected to make an announcement on that matter today. Our reporter Karen Moon is at the media briefing. Hi there, Karen. Nolisi Ngasasana is still getting settled into his position, one would assume. Uh, what exactly is the purpose of the media conference this morning? Well, this event is being hosted by the National Press Club and it is, has sort of been touted as his chance to really tell the world or South Africa what his vision is for the National Prosecuting Authority. Remember, Joanne, that he has on in, in parliamentary briefings in which he uh, went through the National uh, Prosecuting Authority's annual report, made it clear that the challenge to the NPA is really to rebuild not only its integrity, but its credibility. And that question, I think, will be crucial uh, to the answers that he gives today. So just to contextualize this discussion, just take us back to the background of how this Richard and Bluey case was handled by the NPA from the start. Well, Richard Mgluli is a spectre that continues to, he, uh, to haunt the NPA, not unlike, of course, that um, you know, withdrawn corruption case against Jacob Zuma. Intrinsically, what happened with Richard Mgluli was that he was um, accused of a murder committed in 1999 of his uh, former lover's husband. Uh, of course, the woman in question was the mother of his child. Now, according to uh, information that came out during the inquest of this man, which was fundamentally at the heart of the court challenge here, um, seven different witnesses said they'd witnessed Mgluli threatening to kill this man, Opa Ramachibe. Of course, he died in highly suspicious circumstances. He was gunned down, not a single person to date being brought to justice. And very much at one stage, the NPA pushing a theory that he had in fact been helped by several other police officers that he had been working with. Ultimately, however, the NPA referred this matter to inquest and it was that decision that Judge Mur John Murphy said was highly irrational, saying that inquest should only be utilized in cases where it was obvious or not obvious or apparent how the person had died. He said it was very obvious that this was not a natural death, that there was, a, there was clearly a murder involved and that the real only question that he needed to be answered and should have been answered through the criminal justice process was what was Richard and Bluley's culpability. The other charges he faces, of course, concern his alleged misuse of special funds available to the Crime Intelligence Unit, which apparently, according to an investigation that was being mounted by now suspended prosecutor Glynis Breitenbach, implicated in Bluley in a number of financial mismanagement and wrongdoing. Of course, Gl Breitenbach insists that she pushed for that prosecution to go ahead, and it was ultimately that pressure that led the NPA to suspend her. And of course, that developing, Joanne, as we well know, into a very ugly and public row. So really, Mkolisi Mkasana walking into what could be best be described as a massive and chaotic environment, he's really going to have to show huge strong leadership and a clear sense of what he wants to do here if he has any hope of restoring this institution's integrity. Well, in light of what you've just told us about the Richard and Luli case, how significant is it that the first issue Nisana chooses to kickstart his portfolio with is asking for leave to appeal the court order reinstating those charges against Luli? Well, we really have to hear what his rationale for doing so is. I mean, if it's a technical point that, you know, this, that he may well argue that this matters about the independence of the NPA, that the, the NPA can't simply be ordered to reinstate charges in circumstances where it does not believe that there is a prima facie case. But remember, Joanne, that this case is not just about Richard and Bluley. The principle is very problematic for the NPA because if you file a judgment in which you say that the NPA should reinstate charges in, in a certain circumstance, circumstances, it will obviously have resonance to the Jacob Zuma matter, which is currently the subject of heated uh, legal reviews and interactions. And we may well see, you know, that the NPA is, is nervous of the kind of precedent that the Mbluli case could set if it isn't appealed, just in terms of courts being able to interfere in its own mind in the business of, NPA, of the NPA and forcing the NPA to pursue prosecutions that may not be politically palatable to it. Karen Moore, thanks very much for that update uh, from outside the National Prosecuting Authority offices. We'll touch base with Karen in about an hour's time. News that moves. ENCA.com.